Hopefully you're joining me here live on Facebook or maybe you're catching this uh, recorded afterwards, but uh, I wanted to spend a little bit of time here with you. Uh, my name's Kyle from MakeMathMoments.com and uh, I wanted to spend a little bit of time with you trying to help get started on flipping our lessons around just a little bit. Like if you're ever feeling like your lessons are kind of coming off flat uh, or students just aren't actively engaging in the lesson, um, I've got a few things that uh, might help you with that process. So I'm, I'm gonna just hop over to MakeMathMoments.com and uh, hopefully you follow, uh, follow me here and head on over to the website. You'll see right at the top, we've got all kinds of resources there, um, some, some problem-based lessons that you can check out. Uh, we've also got some professional development, if that's what you're looking for, something a little bit more intense or uh, a little bit more um, full uh, to fill up your plate and, uh, and get you uh, thinking and reflecting on your practice. Uh, but as a starting point, where we recommend you go is to check out our three-part framework. Uh, I want to give you a quick little tour of that right now. If you click on our button here, learn about our three-part framework, uh, you get a, a good idea of where John, uh, that's one of the co-creators of MakeMathMoments.com, John Orr, and myself, Kyle Pierce, where we got started on this journey. Uh, when you click on that button, you're going to essentially um, take a look and see what we used to do when we were running our math classes. So first off, uh, the, you might notice this or maybe you recognize this from your own teaching or your own uh, experience as a student. But uh, typically the lesson starts with taking up some homework. Um, you know, there's some sort of note or the teacher uh, shows some formula or models, some examples. And then we give students this opportunity to do some practice and then we rinse and repeat. But unfortunately, a lot of students don't actually engage when we lead our lessons that way. So uh, the framework helps us sort of start down this path. And if I scoot down that uh, framework post just a little bit, you'll note the first part of this framework is all about sparking curiosity. So today I'm not going to go all the way through the framework work, but I do want to just give you a quick little glimpse into what you'll find as you move through the framework blog post. Um, so first off, we go through engagement. We talk about what it is and how we can go about engaging. And actually, we actually reference Dan Meyer because he was one of our early influences on changing the way we delivered our math lesson, changing the way we thought about how to teach. And really, one of the biggest parts with Dan's work uh, for me, that caught my eye was this idea of media rich. It was very visual. There was uh, graphics, there was video, all of those things, and they're all great. But if we dig deeper, it's more than just a video or just an image. And actually, I'll argue that those two things are great if they're available to you, but they're not necessary. Uh, one of the biggest parts that we realized after some time was just the power of storytelling. So we do talk a little bit about that. And we, we talk about how telling a story and setting the context for a particular math problem and essentially building your lesson around a problem is a way that you can get students to lean in and start taking notice. And uh, that's actually one of the strategies that we introduce to you is this idea of noticing and wondering. Now, that's not how we typically did it in the beginning, though, and we, we actually go through that in this post a little bit further. We talk about some of the mistakes that we made along the way. Um, I shouldn't even call them mistakes because, let's be honest, it was learning. It was uh, things that we tried that we tried uh, to get students to get lured into a problem, but it didn't end up working out the way we thought. Um, so what we try to do here is we try to help give you a little bit of insight to hopefully save you from some of those uh, mistakes steps that we've made along the way. And um, something else that you're going to bump into is what we've to call the curiosity path. And we believe that actually when we frame our lessons this way, when we frame it through curiosity, through 
uh, posing a problem that withholds information to get students anticipating, to get them noticing and wondering, and then ultimately giving them an opportunity to make some estimates and get some skin in the game, what we find is that students now want to actually see the problem through. And then, and only then, should we start giving them a little bit more information in order to set them on a productive struggle. Now, I've introduced just a few little tidbits here from the framework, from our three-part framework. Um, this post is quite long. I don't know if you can see the scroll bar here, but uh, this post is incredibly long. Uh, so we recommend that you start just with one little bit. Start with curiosity, sparking curiosity, figuring out how can I start my lesson off just a little bit different to flip the script on my math class. And actually, you know, you can bookmark the page if you You'd like or maybe you want to print it and take it with you or save it as a PDF well you can do that as well throughout that post if you head to makemathmoments.com and click on that three-part framework button um, throughout that post you're gonna see a little button here where you can actually download the guidebook in PDF form you can print it save it share it with your colleagues whatever you'd like uh, but one thing that I'm gonna ask that you do right now if you haven't already if you think that you've gotten some sort of value here uh, an idea or maybe a next step in order to help make your lesson a little more curious do us a huge favor uh, hit the like button subscribe maybe even share this with a colleague just so that we can spread this news because we are super passionate about bringing awesome math learning experiences to students and really awesome experiences for educators as well because you know what 30-year career as an educator we work so hard to engage our students let's make that a little bit easier on ourselves uh, so go ahead share this guidebook and i would love to hear your perspective in the comments uh, what resonated with you what's an idea that you might try just from this video or if you actually checked out the guidebook do us a favor and let us know like a section of the guidebook that you're liking maybe something you're wondering about or curious uh, or maybe something that you're just not feeling like it's going to fit well in your particular context. Maybe we can help you through that struggle. Either way, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this far. And uh, I want to keep this super short. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end this um, Facebook Live right now. If you're checking it out on YouTube, make sure to hit the bell, subscribe. And uh, we can't wait to continue doing some math learning alongside you in the really near future. We'll talk to you soon. Take care and we'll see you at makemathmoments.com.